So that's I a good way of it, putting it. I believe in it that way, but I don't believe that just some cosmic burp in the atmosphere and everything just poof there it was. No, there's no such thing. Who created the atom in the first place? Jesus and God. God created the first atom to begin with, not as in the man atom, but atom as in the little microscopic cell that lives in us, that moves in us, and that makes up our DNA. God created all that. He created everything that we have on our body, in our bodies. There's no way that it can, in any way, shape, or form, be made without God. Let me, let me, if you believe this, if you so believe this, I, I, I will give you a test. And this test will ultimately, hopefully, bring you to Christ. I want you tonight and then tomorrow, for the next week, I want you to sit at a clean table. I want you to stare at one spot, put a sticker, a big sticker, a round sticker at the spot on the middle table, and stare at that spot for the next week and say, give me something, give me something. Whether it's a car you need, I need a car. I, need, I want you to sit there and stare at that spot that's got nothing there. I want you to stare at that spot until something goes poof and it appears. Go ahead. Be my guest. but when, And when it does, come to me. I want to know what it happened. I want physical proof. But if it doesn't, then come back to me and let me know what happened. Because I guarantee you, just by staring at a blank spot on the table, ain't going to make nothing happen. And that's what people say. The Big Bang just, just poof, just appeared out of nothing. And in anything you look at, even in mathematics, a negative plus negative equals a what? A negative. You don't get nothing out of anything. You can't, you can't have nothing and get something. It's like when you walk into the store, unless you steal it, you can't walk out with anything because you got nothing. That's the way it works. If nothing is there, how can you get something out of nothing? You can't. And there's a scripture, I'm trying to remember what it says. Uh, I can't remember now, but it said something like uh, you can't get something out of something if it's dry or something to that effect. I'll think about it later on, and I'll and I will uh, I will uh, I will uh, let you know what it is. But you can't you can't get a sponge to to drip water if it's dry. You know you can't get nothing out of nothing. So with that being said, guys, uh, we got into a little bit of a tangent there, but it's a love relationship that you need to have with Christ, and not just you know when things are going wrong. God's good all the time. Not just when things are going bad. He's good when the good going is good. Uh, and my calls will contest this. When when everything's going good, don't you think that God wants to, to rejoice with us? Yes. Absolutely he does. God wants to rejoice with us. He wants to be right with us saying, yeah, man, look at my son over there. Look at my son. He's doing it. Yeah, you go, Andrew. You go, Chris. Look at that. My son, oh, yeah. Do you see what he's doing over there, Father? Look at my son. He wants to rejoice with us. I say this I say this to my buddy Steve once. This, this is the absolute truth, but it's kind of uh, off-colored. But when, when, don't get me wrong. I did some stuff for my wife before we got married that I shouldn't have done. But I can, I can guarantee you that finally when we got married and we did what we did and we consecrated our marriage by being one with each other in the bedroom situation, that, my, that God was looking down and going, look at my son, God. Look what my son's doing now. He's no longer with a man. Yeah, look at that. That's not a man in his midst. Look at that, Father. He's in bed with a woman. And that that is what God rejoiced with me with at the same time. Even though I was rejoicing, God was rejoicing with me because I was no longer doing the sinful acts that I did when I was in that lifestyle. So yes, it is a little off color. And it's something that we don't talk about a lot on the show, but that is something that definitely God wants to rejoice with you. He don't want you to be the only one rejoicing. He wants to rejoice with you. Amen? Amen. With that being said, Absolutely. let's get into our, like I said, to our announcements. We've already been on here, been on here for almost more than an hour now. It's been 79 minutes and 41 seconds. <laughs> And so let's get into our next announcement, which is the outside outside of the classroom Wednesdays. Now, this I I don't think I've ever told people this before, 
I have once, and I forgot about the slogan I came up with because with, with all my stuff, like you know, T, this is TGIF. Thank God for where Jesus most definitely comes first. The most definitely comes first is my little slogan for TGIF. And I came up with a slogan for Outside the Classroom Wednesdays. And this is my slogan. I'm going to use this from now on. And God brought it back to my attention. But but look for the Outside the Classroom Wednesdays, where we think outside the classroom to everyone who needs the gospel each and every day. And that's a really good slogan. We think outside of the classroom to those who need the gospel each and every day. And that's what it is. It's all about not not keeping Jesus in that little box, that classroom, and just for yourself. And we need Jesus, and we, we want to hear his goodness, and we want to hear his, his mercies and his grace. And we want to go to the pastor and say, forgive us, pastor. We love Jesus, and we love you, and can you pray for us? But we need to think outside of the classroom. How many people do you think, Chris, need God more than us? Don't get me wrong, we need Jesus. We need him each and every day of our lives. But how much more do people out there need him? How many a thousand, is it thousands? Or Billions. Thousands? Millions of people out there are are going straight to hell because they don't have people like us going out there. We're not out on the streets ourselves, but we're doing it through the internet. Anybody can come right straight to my show, our show, I should say, and listen to the message and come to Christ. So we're doing it through our through our show on the internet, but millions, billions of the Bible, not the Bible, but the the, uh, the history states that there are billions of people in this world, billions who need God, billions. And some have governments that will kill them if they even attempt to learn about God. And they need it even more than we do. And we hide God in our little tiny classroom, and we say. We love God, and we want him to stay right here. But we need to think outside of the classroom. Yes, God is good to us, and we keep him inside, and we have him in the classroom. But that's the point of outside the classroom Wednesdays is to bring him outside the classroom. To think outside of the classroom to those who need God or the word or the ministry, or the the gospel each and every day. And it, and it came to me, how I got that slogan was because I used to always say, you need to think outside the box. And when I realized the box reminded me of the classroom, so we need to think outside of the classroom to those who need the gospel each and every day. So look for outside of the classrooms where Pastor John will be giving the word. Now, Pastor Barry will be the the speaker this week again and he's had a good three weeks of a good solid message but pastor john will be back soon within the next couple of weeks hopefully to preach more of the outside the classroom wednesday's episodes and he's got a good word on his heart as well so look forward to outside the classroom wednesdays and enjoy uh enjoy bible study with us we have people and i'll tell you we had about 60 people last turnaround on our show that tuned in for the week. 60 people, and that's a blessing. It may not be a whole 100 or 200, but still, that's 60 different people who needed a word from God at that moment. Whether or not they're saved, unsaved, or whatnot. Whatever the case is, they still needed that word right then and there. And that 60 people got what they needed. So there you go. So yeah, we have a lot of people that join us for Bible study. So if you want to join us for Bible study, and you're not in the area, join us for Outside the Classroom Wednesdays where we think outside the classroom to each, to everyone who needs the gospel each and every day. So join us for Outside the Classrooms. And another thing I want you to know is to join us for the rumble where we'll be shaking the heavens, rattling the earth, and rumbling against the principalities of darkness and evil. And this, again, is part of our, going to be part of our message today, too. I'm talking our message all in the announcements now. And... Uh, Back in the day, though, Chris, in the 20s and 30s, when boxers used to box, they called it a rumble. Now they call it a boxing match, but it was called a rumble. They'd get into a boxing ring, and they'd fight each other, and they'd beat each other up, pretty much. See, wrestling is fake, but boxing is real. And they'd beat each other up and, you know, bust each other's chops and all that fun stuff. And uh, But the Bible says that we don't fight or what rumble against flesh and blood, but are principalities of darkness and evil. 
So we're going to take one day out of the week and do nothing but pray, pray, pray. Fight, fight, fight. Rumble, rumble, rumble. And why do I say at midnight? Why do I say at midnight, Chris? Because it's dark and darkness loves darkness. There you go. Darkness loves darkness. And darkness comes out at midnight. Especially on Halloween. At 12 o'clock midnight, evil comes out immediately. All that junk starts happening. So darkness loves darkness. And when you have a dark room and you put your hand in front of your face, you can't see your hand because all those little specks of darkness are collecting into that room, which causes the total darkness to where you can't see them from your face. Excuse me. But when you turn on a nightlight, is that darkness now being dispelled somewhat? Yes. To finally, when all your lights get turned on, guys, what happens? All that darkness is now gone. There's no darkness in that room, and all darkness is either pushed to another room or dispelled entirely. And what we're going to do is we're going to pray. Because when you pray in the name of Jesus and you display God's light, you flick God's switch and turn on his light, what happens? Satan has to flee and demons tremble, the Bible says. The Bible clearly says, let me say it again, Satan has to flee and demons tremble. Now, does Satan flee because God showed a poof, ta-da, here I am? Does Satan flee because Jesus appeared in front of him? Or does no. Satan appear at the name of Jesus? Don't get me wrong. He appears when Satan does flee when Jesus appears entirely. But it's at the name of Jesus. It's, that's it. When you're going through something, Chris, the first thing you ought to say is Jesus. And it's done. Jesus. And it's over. There's no saying, well, you got to come down for me, God. I, I'm bailing this and Satan's right here. No. God says that my name is so powerful that at the name of Jesus, demons tremble and Satan flees. At the name, it even says at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that what? Jesus Christ is truly Lord? His name has that much power. Amen. Amen. So we need to use that power. We have that kind of power ourselves because Jesus, that, that name, Jesus lives inside of us. Again, love relationship. Now, people say, well, when you come to God, everything will be peachy king and everything will just find you. Will have. No, you'll have troubles. But you know what? God gave you an escape route. Everyone has their fire escape route. God gave you an escape route. And that escape route is Jesus. It's not I want to say... Go ahead. I want to say, though, that uh, sometimes the demons do resist at the name of Jesus because we also need faith. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There are times when if you don't have the faith, but you say Jesus and you're still scared and you don't have faith and you're going, Jesus, they're laughing at you because you're terrified. Because when you, when you show fear... That's the thing. If you show fear, but you still proclaim the name of Jesus, but you show fear, that's when they laugh at you. Like, yeah, you don't really, really mean that name. Ah, that man, that name means nothing to us right now. Ha, 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 but when you say luck, in the name of Jesus, you have that boldness of God, and you point your finger at Satan and the demons, you say, in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave Satan now. And you say that with boldness and with all the faith that you can muster up. Flee in the name of Jesus that's Christ, when, Satan. That's when Satan has to flee and the demons tremble. Is when you have that faith. That's a great point you brought up. Because, because, it, it, because what does the Bible say? Faith without works is what? Dead. Dead. Even though Jesus is a powerful name and that name can cast out all everything. If you don't have that faith, that action is dead. That work you're doing is dead. Because faith without works is dead. Works without faith is dead. You can't have the works. You can't have anything unless you have the faith. 
Faith is accompanied with the works. They go together perfectly, do they not? 